Hi everyone, Simon from High Plane Games. I hope you're well and welcome to my As We Play review of Open Wheel Manager 2. This isn't my usual style of review, but I thought it would be useful to talk you around all of the different mechanics and things that you can do in this game because it's so detailed and in depth and reminds me, if you've ever played like F1 management games before, the closest this game gets to compared to other ones that are out there is Grand Prix Manager 2, an F1 manager um, that was done on the 1997 series by, I think it was System 2000. Um, this isn't like the current ones that are being done by Frontier, for example. This is a real throwback to the 90s and 2000s heyday of F1 management games, which I personally love, but it's worthwhile flagging that before you dive in. Also, please be aware, I chose the worst team ever and played terribly for the first few seasons and I've totally buggered myself up. So I've learned an awful lot playing through all of these different seasons. Um, you don't play 95, you start at 96. But having been in the 10th, 11th or 12th slots for every season so far, I now know what I should be doing to make things better. So I'll kind of drop in some tips as we go around and let's kick off. So this game is all around point generation and um, you do that by this kind of tab across the top here so I've got reputation I've come last in the last couple of seasons because I've been trying to save some dosh and get myself out of bankruptcy so I'm an outsider I currently own a hundred percent of my shares and teams can sell their shares and change names as you go through I just recently had that with an engine manufacturer buying out a team which I thought was quite cool you have leadership points, and leadership points are handy for putting in um, big upgrades to your facilities, for example, and things like that. But the kind of main ones that you'll be looking at off-season are design points um, and production points outside of a race weekend too. Because design points are all around how you build and upgrade your car, but often they don't come alone. So over on here, you've got research points, on track points, tires and engine points. And if I dive into my car screen, you'll see my 2002 chassis is ranked only a level two of 10, oops. Um, this is its effectiveness. And then down on here, it shows you how effective I am with my tires at different temperatures. Over on here is the available research that I have to solve anything. The only way how you can level up your chassis once it's been designed and built, and that's very much determined by how much money you've spent on the next year's chassis, but also the level of your staff um, and, and how competent they are. And spoiler alert, my staff are atrocious. <laughs> Spot one of the first problems that I had with this team. Um, you can see that to upgrade this, you need 10 design points, but also 10 tire points. And I've only got the nine and the 16. So when that becomes available, we can solve that. And once every one of these tire, working with tires gets to 100%, you can then get some research to level up your chassis and slowly get up the levels that way. Whilst you're trying to do that, you're also busy trying to design what your 2023 chassis will be like. And you can decide whether or not you want to go for like maximum efficiency in corners and tyre saving or maybe put your car lower to the ground and that will make it more draggy uh, sorry less draggy but then less great on the downforce and not great around slow corners it's entirely up to you how you want to do it but what this does is it makes what's called the green zone in your car bigger and smaller depending on how close to 100% of everything you can get so you want a big wide car, you'll get a bigger green zone, which allows you to find setups improvements quicker when it gets to a race weekend. But ultimately, you're going to have a very directional car. So if I've only got 60% tyre savings, that's a three stop strategy immediately, which is probably not the best thing to do. So you really have to like muck and play about with this to decide what it is that you want to do. As you go through the game as well, you'll also be able to upgrade individual parts. And again, you can see the design points play a key role here. And once you get point, um, like better items as you go along, you'll also need the research points going along here. Now, design points are things that you can get every week. 
all of these, the track, the tires, the engine and the research points are only available when you go testing on a test track or if you are uh, doing practices in practice weekends. The problem with that is that that affects the state of your car. Remember, this game is focusing on 90s F1. <laughs> Everything blew up back then. And so reliability is an absolutely massive part of this game because um, teams run out of money and can't afford to replace their parts. And so sometimes, a uh, key trick if you're running a lower end team, like don't spend all of your money replacing things early in the season like I did. Wait till the end and start replacing stuff because other cars have conked out and you can sneak yourself for like an eighth or ninth position and bump yourself up a couple of positions on the Constructors' Championship for doing for that. And so, as you can see, everything's got its own percentage point. If I wanted to replace any of this, as you can see, it costs an awful lot of money. I've only got a certain amount of money, seven and a half million down here, and that's the best I've been for a while. But outside of the engine, if I do anything else to upgrade, you can see it's costing me green spanners, which is the production point, which I've got plenty of up here. But if you was in a big team and you was replacing stuff every race, you'd be churning through that very, very quickly. So that is a, definitely a risk versus reward of stuff that you can do there. You've then got some specific things that you can do with your engine. So again, the engine has a engine mapping green zone. Um, this will make more sense when we get into the actual race weekend itself. But if you get 50 points, you can upgrade a segment of your green zone. So therefore you can increase power, reliability, cooling or fuel efficiency. Um, as you can see, the base stats are there. I've got the terrible engine. <laughs> um, facilities. In this specific playthrough, I've only got office research departments and factory stuff. But if I had 54 million, I could go and build a test track and have that ready in about a year or so's time and same with a wind tunnel too but the upkeep of that is very very huge you need enough leadership points to be able to do it but you also need enough money to be able to do stuff money is tricky because when you get into your contracts you've got drivers and thankfully i've got two pay drivers which is also why my car is not great i don't get a reserve driver because i've not got a test track to have a reserve <laughs> But then I've got a chief designer, engineer, and uh, like a production manager, and they cost DOSH two. Tires, you choose every season, and you've got a choice of two, um, unlike today's world, where it's a monopoly. And then in here, you've got engine, gearbox, brakes, and so on and so forth. Now, I wanted to call out the contracts, because I think the contract, the way how contracts work in this game is quite interesting. So if I dive into 2023, um, let's take a look at, um, and you can see I'm trying to save money because I'm only saying that I want four of each. <laughs> That's the way I'm trying to save money because I was asking for 12 of each and it was doing me in. If I wanted to go for an engine, for example, I'd click to look at engine and you can see I've got, um, I'm the only Motor Q, Motork engine that's there. And some people have signed up for multiple seasons, which is lovely. Um, however, if I wanted to go for oil engine, for example, which is a better engine than I've got at the moment, um, a lot of different companies have different tiers of supply. So you can have a sponsor, a partner or a client. Now, Oil Engine looks like it's only going to offer a client contract next year. But, yeah, so it won't let me send me an offer for it. But can you see that if I was a sponsor, they would be paying me 101k to do it. If I was a partner, I don't pay anything. But if I'm a client, I'm forking out an awful lot price per point, uh, per part. So, Ideally, what I'd be looking to try and do is, let's have a look at Wells, for example. So Wells have a partner and a client. So I could try and offer myself and say, hey, do you want to be a partner? And we could do that for the next three years. And then I can send an offer. Again, going back to points, these points come out of my negotiation points. 
So I told you this game was all about points. <laughs> so when I send the offer, that goes off and then it's in my negotiations tab up on the top here. But what it will also tell me, and this will update each week, is it will give me a score, but also tell me who else this uh, manufacturer is talking to. And there was only a certain amount of slots in each place. And so you're never quite sure exactly where you stack up against everyone else. But it's things like they're higher in the constructor's order, they're offering to, if you're doing like sponsorship or if you're offering to be a, a partner or a, like a, a supplier contract and you're paying for it, you might be offering more money than the other people and therefore your score higher. Um, so you really have to try and manipulate it. And sometimes you'll have a couple of uh, like uh, contract discussions going on at once. And you're not sure which one you're going to get. And I really, really like this idea and it lands really, really well. On the flip side, um, we have being able to get sponsorship for the car. So this is my car. You can choose your colours and livery, um, but you have to do that at the start of each year. Um, so this is my typical Batmarker Brigade, purple and yellow. Um, now, you can decide whether or not you want to have uh, sponsors for like two years or just the singular year. I always try and get everything done as quick as possible. Now, my reputation is terrible because I'm always last. <laughs> So I can only get up to a three tiered level sponsorship deal. So I can't go much higher, but again, I can go off and try and find some sponsors for 2023 where I've got all of these slots to fill everything. So I'll click on that to go and find sponsors. And in three weeks time, I'll be able to put, decide what I get placed on. And it will kind of come back telling me how many million they're going to do for the year and roughly where like a little bar on how much it takes to satisfy them before I can sign them in. So that's all good. Finance just gives you balances on a sheet for what it is that you've got coming in and you can take out loans as well. Those loans aren't big enough to like get you out of a hole. So I find I've not really touched that particularly. And then the other thing to look at before we dive into race as well is the calendar which um, gives you a little bit of a prelude of the different types of tracks that you've got, um, whether or not there's going to be particular challenges and whether or not your car is going to be worth like aligning with. Because if you've got a better engine than you do have car, then the practice in the Czech Republic would have been a good place for us to, to do well at because it's a high speed track. However, if I was on um, Japan, for example, I'd need to make sure that I've got good brakes, for example. There is lower formula here, but it's all simulated. And I believe they're looking at trying to add in more of this later on down the road, but also giving you different uh, eras to tackle so that you can have, because this is emulating 90s F1, but they're looking at doing other eras of F1 in a management style in the future as well. So yeah, that I think is everything-ish, except for if you need to, and we've I've done it on purpose for this, um, I've, we're gonna install an experimental car part to give us 30% more downforce, <laughs> but reduce our reliability. Now, obviously this is all down to leadership stuff. Um, I'm going to also give a speech before the race as well. Why not? Because that will um, reduce down the ability to make a mistake and lock a tyre, which is a huge thing. OK, I think we're ready to go. Let's dive off into the race. And here we go. So you get a practice, a quali and a race. You can kind of see what the temperatures are. Um, and all of that kind of stuff. And you can see fast corners are a weakness for our car, so that's not going to help here. Our car has a lot of downforce, um, which will keep it stable in many of the fast corners of this track, so it's a bit of a combo there. But it also gives you kind of a score out of how well aligned the car is to this track, because this is kind of a midi one. The other problem, I've got two pay drivers. They aren't the best in the world, but they're keeping my team afloat. But they don't do very well with tyres, so that's not going to be very helpful for us either. So the big thing here is fast corners and tyre wear. 
which takes us to the car setup. And unlike other management games, you're not going to be playing around too much with actual car setup. What you're going to be doing on this screen is deciding... Remember when I was talking about green zones earlier on? It was all around, okay, what are we going to do with this? So I'm going to go for a dry weather setup because there's no rain coming. But I also want to see, do I want to go for power? Do I want to go for fuel economy? Do I want to go for reliability with my engine? And I'm going to go for reliability because of that extra thing that we've got on. And then when you click this, oh, thank God for that. This is, it's done it randomly. And um, what determines this? I'm still not 100% sure. <laughs> but it's like a roulette wheel spin. And so the, remember going back to um, having a green zone, the more of the green zone in that thing that you've been able to fill out for all of your practice and improvements of the car, the more likely you are to get a bonus of 10% faster and uh, faster and slower corners and efficiency behind cars. Whereas the other driver, uh, Calabria, doesn't get that. We'll then move forward into practice. And this is where, remember going back to the other points, this is where this all comes in. So you can choose however many laps you're going to do in practice and dictate what it is that you're going to do. And each driver has its own stats. Um, so Augustine has a feedback score of five. Calabria has a feedback score of four. And you'll be able to see that they aren't quite generating the same amount of feedback, which then translates into points as down in the bottom. Now we were looking at tires, weren't we? Because we were quite close to being able to get a tire upgrade. So if I say that actually we're not gonna do anything on our own car setup, I just wanna generate tire research points. That will go there and then you simulate practice. Along comes Don Collins, who seems to win everything in this game. <laughs> <laughs> um, and off and away he goes and there we are well off the back in our Amiga GPs um, that is probably the, one of the worst <laughs> exactly this is going to be a terrible one but you can see there that other people have had some kind of failures but thankfully we got lots of points in there which means we generated nine tyre points we didn't work on any setup changes, so we've not improved the setup, which is part of the problem. We then move forward into simulating qualifying. You can't watch or partake in quali. It does it all for you. So again, Don Collins is up there on top. And there we are, propping up the back row. 23rd and 24th. I miss grids of 24 cars, I really do. And then it takes you to race stratage. So... We've got, it tells you here how many laps that you've got um, for each tire as you kind of go through. You don't have to, I think, run hard and soft, but almost every race seems to be built in a way that kind of means that you end up doing that anyway. Um, if this is a dry race, this is fine. It's not going to move anywhere, but it will automatically put you on inters or wets if it's kind of part raining. Um, so you don't have to kind of watch out too much for that. But you can alter a lot of this um, as you go and you can see the degrees and all of that kind of stuff as well. Um, I'm going to go into start race. You can hit simulate race, which will then just instantly take you to a results screen. So what I would say with Open Wheel Manager 2 is that it's really quick to get through a season if you've just kind of gone, Do you know what? This season, we're not even doing anything to the car. We're just getting in a couple of pay drivers, saving some money so that we can make some big changes later. And if you're taking on a back of the grid team, that's my big lesson, is do that for the first year. Ditch everyone because they're on ridiculously expensive contracts and then be like a proper pauper for two seasons. <laughs> then invest in your car and your team because then you'll have enough money to make big gains um, and I stupidly was replacing engines like every race spending like a million pounds in repairs and that was stupid for me. So let's dive into starting a race. I'm not going to change anything on those setups there. And let's dive into race in action.
Now, there'll be two maps that pop up when we get into the game. You've got the 3D model version and a 2D kind of top-down thing. Very similar to every other uh, management game that's out there. Here we go. I think it's just taking slightly longer because I'm screen recording. So it's just having a little thinky. Here we go. It's not normally that long, if I'm perfectly honest. So, um, this is all viewed from fixed camera perspectives. You can't move very much around. I'll explain what's going on on the screen up on the top here. So laps, you can do um, two speed, three speed or four speed, I think that is. Um, if you hit 16 speed, it takes you to the 2D version of the screen, which takes you down to that. You've got weather up on the top and then kind of, you can see the little marker up on the top there for whether it's gonna be in inters or wets and track temperatures here. Um, down on the panel here, you can see this becomes like a real proper managementy thing. So each driver, and you can kind of flip between who you're watching and you can watch anyone on the actual thing here as well as you kind of click through. Um, you can ask someone to fight or attack. You can avoid the curbs to cool the tires or attack the curbs, which will warm up your tires. And you can see down here you've got heating. So the hotter the tires, it then starts to put a little red box around it, which then affects how much wear the tires have got. And you can see we've got a base wear, and that's just because of our CAC car. But then it's also a does the driver's skill improve it? Does the chassis tire wear improve it? Um, from there and then we've got the same thing for engines so an engine will have a base wear and some of that will be and then we've got like a performance factor as well so you saw that we had the worst engine so that's why we've got poor engine power but we've also um, got kind of a negation there with the engine resource being taken away too and how that kind of ties into the gearbox and the setup and the drag so yeah, we've got all kinds of different uh, issues going on there. And then here we go with fuel consumption. We've got a base consumption and a fuel a engine fuel economy. So if we would have got a green zone on fuel economy, this base would be better and then we wouldn't have to carry so much fuel. So we've got some different strategies going on here. You can dive in and choose and change your pits strategy. What I will say with these pit strategies is that they're really finickety. <laughs> to kind of get right because it always it doesn't drop you nicely in it's every five laps so you have to kind of pick one and then plus and minus your way around and it's a real pain in the bum <laughs> and over on here in the race menu you can see what the current tires are for everyone so we've got a real mix of hard and soft you can then see what the fastest lap chart is for everyone this is why this game so reminds me of grand prix manager 2 because all of this is kind of accessible uh, here. Then you can see who's retired. You can see what the latest pit stops are, but also it slowly fills out over time on the tyres that people have. Um, you can get the track conditions and the percentage of road wetness there if you don't spot it over here. And then this is just like the complete runtime of everything of what everyone's got. You can also look at your car's total wear rate here too. But what I would say is that it's not when something hits zero that something conks out. These cars conk out constantly all the time. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, let's see how we get on and listen to some Jake Sanson commentary before I start speeding stuff up. We're about to get underway. Let's race. So, can say. so as the race settles in, in the lead at the moment, right behind them in second, Wolf. So you can flick it between interviews or just overall off of the leader. I'm going to slightly speed this up a little bit just to get us off and away. But it looks like we're going to be plodding around at the back for this one. Bastian Wolf has just moved into the lead. What a phenomenal move. Well done. Uh, not everyone has commentated on names. In the lead, Collins. In second place, Bellucci Racing. Oh! Third position. 
Well, that took long. Omega GP driver is out of the race. What a disappointment. So, as you can see, one car conked out immediately. Nothing immediately showing as a problem there, but it was an engine failure for Augustine. So, that's a shame. We've got Calabria left. Let's see how we get on. But can you see how everything is slowly dropping down a little bit? And you can see Bellucci driver is whoever's that Kramer. Has made a big lockup. Oh dear, that is going to be a big flat spot. So the longer you stay in the game, the more vague the commentary becomes, which is a shame because I think actually Jake Sanson does quite a decent job. In the lead, Collins in second place. Bellucci Racing driver in third position. But what I am going to do is speed this up a wee bit because we're kind of plumbed at the back. So, but. Hopefully this gives you kind of an idea of how good slash interesting a race can and can't be. Oh, that's someone else conking out as well. Ning Ning from Pinari. Pinardi. Spe guess which team that's named after. To be fair, it's always Amiga and Pinardi that are busy battling at the back of the field. <laughs> It's always us two going over last place. So, yeah, we'll continue on. What I do find with this game, and you can see Calabria's locked the tyres. So what I'm going to do, because he's not great on tyre wear, is I'm going to tell him to avoid the kerbs. And what that will do is that will speed up how quickly he gets his tyres back into a working temperature window. So that will help his tyre wear because... I mean, he's on a relatively quick stint on the softs anyway, which is probably giving us a bit of a pace flattery to be able to cling on to the back. But, yeah, we'll see how we get on. Um, let's push the engine a little bit then. And you can see he's locked the tyres again, so I'm going to do the same thing here. Kind of get it back down again and if if someone's locking the tires too much on a stint sometimes you will also like you'll keep them on call for a, a good while longer because you although you can run out of tires you don't like just conk out if you run out of tires if that makes sense oh god he's locked up the tires again <laughs> calabria <laughs> naughty naughty oh that's someone else out Forth. They're all conking out at the same point. They don't normally. So that's a hydraulic failure there. So you can really see that like, this is like 1990s, early 2000s style of retirement rates, which is lovely. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think we're going to be plum last in this race, sadly. So whilst all that's going on, a little quick flimming around up front. Looks quite good. And there you can see some of the other like data and stats kind of pulling themselves out, so that's quite helpful. I don't think anyone else will be pitting anytime soon, but we won't be too far off. And I'll flick to 16 speed in a second once we've done the first pit stop, because I think that'll be kind of all that you're waiting to look for in a race itself. But it's slightly more hands-on than the, like, overtake, slow slow up, slow down, because you, you, it makes more sense to manage stuff. But, um, yeah, you have to be really, really careful. And you can see, like, we've dropped so far off the back now because the tyres are knackered. Um, and what I would really say about this game is that it really does feel like it's playing out the stats of your car because um, in a previous season I'd focused heavily on tyre wear so that um, it had like a really really strong tyre performance and I'd be atrocious at the start of a sprint uh, of a, of a um, stint sorry so you can see uh, another one's in alongside me. So that's Stenvolin. 
and there's me as well now you can kind of see what pops up there and now you can see a little bit of blue flag action this game does do quite well in a blue flag stop locking up um i think this game handles blue flags better than <laughs> the frontier game there's bastion out as well so we're slowly moving up the order we're now in the top 20 hurrah um what was i saying anyway the um getting confused now <laughs> too busy too much excitement watching a race sadly um the this game works better than frontier of the blue flags but it also feels like it's actually replicating a stint because as a stint went on my cars would catch back up with cars that had say the worse rate of tire wear and I hadn't changed any of the stats of anything and I couldn't tell whether or not someone was going faster or slower with like engine speeds or something like that. But yeah, the whole thing just felt like it was way, way, way more in tune with some of the stuff that's going on elsewhere. The flip side of that is that this game doesn't feel like it's fully uh, on board with all of its driver stats. Um, sometimes things just feel a little bit too random for their own good. Um, and I'm still not, like the reliability we had an engine failure but my the engine for that driver was at 81% that feels unfair and a bit too randomised for my liking potentially um, so yeah there we go anyway lots of drivers coming into the pits there's us out on our Larry. Let's go 16 speed so you can see a little bit of this and get it all through. Some more tyre locking. There's another couple of people out. I can say we're a good 20 seconds off the back of everyone else, which is not great. Oh. Cold tyres now. We've gone too far the other way. <laughs> but you can see there how the wear then is affected by the fact that we've got cold tyres. So let's get him to push a little bit. There we go. Now he's back. Back in on the pits. Back out again. Very much on our Larry. But going okay and then if you look at the pit stops can you see that there we go they've gone soft hard hard and quite a lot of the people are doing similar so that's good but yes we aren't exactly speeding along are we stop locking up we gave you a 10% bonus Calabria but this is the problem with doing um, Walker Orange driver in third position. Is it, that's the problem of taking on pay drivers. Is that they are not great. There was one season where I had a pay driver and a like actual hired driver. In the lead. And they were a good, like, 1.3 seconds off. And I was like, <laughs> um, But I couldn't afford to keep the the actual good driver for much longer. Um, so, yeah, that was the end. The beginning of my downward spiral. <laughs> but, hey, top 15. I'll take that for now. Only two laps down. That could have been way, way worse. And we're going to get a car home. So... I think back to the 90s, sometimes that was quite difficult for some teams. Oh, Hong's out. So that'll be a nice little 14th for me. Done. So, you get your results at the end. So, Don Collins has led and won. We were two laps down. There's an engine failure by the Black Sea driver, so that's unfortunate. We get to see our best laps and when they were on. So we did it on the hard tyres, so we would have been a bit faster on the soft. So like we're not a million miles away from the Pinari racing team. 
This reminds me of what happened in my previous season where I was half a second off them there and then I was about three temps ahead by the end of the season. Um, yeah, okay. And you can see lap by lap kind of where we all were with that too. And that is a race weekend in Open Wheel Manager 2. Um, at the end of that, you get an update of what's happened. So Maxine Panari didn't get anything through. It gives you a teammate qualifications battle, which I think is very, very helpful. And then you get these icons up on the top here. So we've got a new chassis decision to make. So we've got 19 design points and 18 tire points. What would be a good one for us to work on? So for me, this is about probably increasing the soft tire temperature to 100% from 12 to 18. So I'll click to solve that. It will take one week for it to be solved and off and away it goes. If I'd have updated one of these things instead, it takes a week to progress, but then it would arrive for me to then add onto my car. And instead of repairing something, so you can see these engines have dropped like to 33 and 54. So if I was to repair those, it's going to cost me 1.18 million. And that's what I mean by like, you're really, really strapped for cash as a tiny team. But if I'd say bought a new front wing and upgraded it, you'd have to buy it from the second line of grade out line um, to be a little upgraded one. And you can hover over things and see exactly what the current level of things are and what they would be upgraded to. Um, there you can see where our negotiations are. So we're currently on a 0.9% plus up. If I'd offered a driver a terrible deal with no salary, the wrong option, second driver instead of first, that can be in the minus numbers. <laughs> Indeed it has from me because I've got no money to spare. And you are, your reputation and your budget ties into how high a offer you can make for staff. So it won't let you go beyond your means. And so that means that as a lower end team, you stay lower end by game design rather than trying to like force your way out of it again, which is why you have to do that whole kind of take a step back and hope for the best type thing. Um, let's forward on a week just to see if there's anything else that will pop up in the meantime. No. So that helps there. What's the other thing? Is there anything else I wanted to show? Yeah, actually, let's have a look at drivers. So drivers and staff will have their own stats. So do engines and suppliers. So I've got a filter on here with drivers with sponsorship. This person, as you can see, I'm trying to go with feedback so that I could try and improve the car as best as possible <laughs> over the over the season so that it wasn't like terrible. So if I went on to Nikki Gulkins, they're actually quite decent. They've got a poor reputation, but their actual stats aren't too bad. So you can change names of people, which is quite handy if you're trying to mod some of this. Um, but there would be a second driver. That would be the sponsorship that they would bring in per week. And it would be for that year. But if I went into... Let me get rid of that. Um, you can filter by speed. If we went for... Gary Magduna. There you can see it gives them their full background, what their current contract details are, and whether or not we would be able to um, do that. But it takes it gives you an attitude to the team. So he wants. It, well, we're basically in minus nineteen. So is he even going to be interested in us? No. And you can see that all of his demands are outside of our financial limit. So it really locks you into having to really fight over multiple seasons to be able to get your team out of the doldrums. And I think this is something that might be Marmite to people, but it makes the game more realistic because you're not going to have like Minardi suddenly become a top five team in two seasons <laughs> and this kind of forces you down that route but it, what it does mean is that the gulf and divide if you don't manage things right like what i did in this playthrough like what i started off three seconds off uh, pole i'm now more like five because i didn't manage things properly early on so i'm definitely up for a restart you can also see in here you've got all of the different um 
team positions and all of that kind of stuff, where the points and places are. You can see the team's reputations, so mine is absolutely terrible. Uh, Greener Motors has slumped down, Pinari's gone up, you can kind of see over time, and then that affects who they can kind of get. So you can get teams to kind of go on a bit of a roll. So um, in this particular playthrough, um, Kinawaki was, which I'm sure is like someone's renamed Tyrrell as Kinawaki, they were down in like 7th, 8th at the beginning of my playthrough, but they got a couple of, they got a key driver and a partnership engine deal, like in consecutive seasons, which chucked them up the field. So it can be done, you just have to really, really think about like what it is that you want people to do. So it gives you tons of data, tons of options, tons of things to do. Um, yeah, there we go. Um, what I will do, just for fun, let's, so I'm not going to touch anything here and if you're worried that that's going to take an awful long time to get through, if you want to speed through this game, yeah, I got 23, do you know what, it's dry for the race. We're going to go with reliability again because when I do that, oh there we go, so you got a good drag reduction, slow corner stuff there for Calabria. Um, I'm still very conscious about tyres, so we're going to do some more of that to get that over the line. There we go, another engine failure this time for Calabria, but Augustine with the same engine managed to get 28 laps in, and we're a bit closer to the pace this time around. So another seven points for tyres. Simulated Collins, simulated Collins, simulated qualifying puts Don Collins up on the top. We are towards the back, half a second off everyone else. We can look at the race strategy and kind of go, yeah, that feels okay. And then if you just go to simulate race, bonk, you're done. So gearbox failure this time for Augustine, clearly a car killer. And we came home 18th, two laps down, a good 47 seconds off the rest of the field particularly fast either in that race and so as you kind of bound through that again here we go we've got another new decision for the chassis what do we want to solve this time I feel like let's go for the soft tyre and get that sorted eventually we'll get the find 35 design points to upgrade to a level 3 chassis and then that becomes the new chassis that we can get on here so again engine knackered all of that kind of stuff there Ah, this was the last thing I wanted to show. So, we've got a three-tier sponsor with 4.7 million for 2023. Optimal place on the car to put this would be G. Let's put Blunder on because I feel like that is a good description of my management style. And now you can see it filled out the thing to sign the contract. Um, the other cool thing about this is that you can have a light and dark version. Which I quite like. So um, what I mean by this is like if I just do that and that can you see how it's not really filling up. So it's entirely up to you uh, how you go about it. So that's that. Oh there we go team progress. So I've only lost three tenths of a second, but Coral lost 1.2 seconds, Bellucci gained 1.3, so you can see there's some real swings going on here um, over time. And there will be uh, engine and car part like law uh, regulation changes. So last season I was in this game, there was a regulation change that meant that our front wing was illegal because we had a much better front wing than this. So it chopped it off and put it back down to level five again. Um, engines, uh, things change, tire regulations change, and it just kind of chops off levels of what the highest version of something is that you can get. So um, super, super helpful for that there. Ah, I was hoping there was gonna be some kind of supplier upgrade, but clearly no. But that is Open Wheel Manager 2 in its current state for release. I'm really, really enjoying this game. I think it's one of those games where you can 
really get into the detail and manage everything if you want to but it also allows you to breeze through a season as you saw that was an entire weekend done in a couple of minutes so if you don't have the time and you want to kind of make some decisions and then just spot things out on the other side it allows you to do that too which a lot of other f1 management style games don't um i do think that there needs to be some uh more i guess data or uh, indicators as to whether or not you're doing the right thing and what you're prioritizing makes sense um, because it does feel like the lower teams just get further and further away and the faster teams get faster and faster um, and I do find that whilst the contracts management stuff works really really well you're constantly hoping and praying that you're going to um, bag someone half decent and quite often you end up chasing someone that then decides they're going to retire <laughs> and I was like oh thanks <laughs> so there are a couple of my bug bears that I've had come along I've run into one bug with this game as well which killed off uh one of my other playthroughs which was um a car went into the pits and never left again and it was my car and so the race could never end so hopefully that will, was just a one-off issue that didn't occur again. But that was super frustrating because I'd saved mid-race because actually it was one where we was doing exceptionally well. And I was on the fringes of points, which is very rare for me in this game. And uh, sadly, that caked out my um, playthrough of that. So hopefully it doesn't happen to other people. But yeah, I've really, really enjoyed this. I think it's a lovely throwback to the 90s um, of F1 management games. If you enjoy all of the Microprose ones, the Grand Prix Manager 1 and 2, Grand Prix World, F1 Manager by System 2000, um, those over the modern day ones, this will be right up your street. Um, and if my old fail cast um, sidekick uh, Ben Williamson is kicking about, mate, this one's for you, go buy it. <laughs> um, hope that was helpful and interesting leave any comments or questions down below i'll get back to you on it and hopefully this wasn't too much of a terrible review because i decided to do it differently take care